I think I'm really going to enjoy doing this video, and I think you're going to enjoy it too. I've spoken in depth here on United People's TV about Eric Ten Hag and his philosophy before he became our manager. I went in a bit more depth when he became our manager. I've covered the preseason in detail and the patterns and the build-up and the system that Ten Hag is going to build at Manchester United. And yesterday, we saw it in action for the first time. We are Bangkok Century Cup champions. You may as well just end the season now. But no, all jokes aside, what I want to do in this video is run through what we saw yesterday against Liverpool in that 4-0 win that, let's be honest, none of us expected. And it is a real positive. Yes, it's a preseason. Yes, it's that's it. It's a preseason. It doesn't really matter. But there was a lot of patterns that we saw yesterday, and I want to run through all of them here because it's a lot of what we've been talking about and covering here on United People's TV, and we saw it all in action. So make sure you join the community if you're new here. Make sure you drop a like on the video as well. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a top-level video like this, and you won't want to miss out on it. Now, the first thing, as I said, let's not get too carried away. We've only won the Bangkok Century Cup. Eric Ten Hag's not getting too carried away at all. It will take a lot of time, he says. Believe me, I've seen a lot of mistakes. Liverpool played three teams. They were not at their strongest. We have not overestimated this result. He won't let it get away from himself. He'll keep his feet ground. Of course he will, and he makes sure the players do too. We did the press, a few mistakes in pressing, conceded some chances, but we also created a lot. I think our team played brave and played proactive. We have to work really hard to get the mistakes out. But of course, we're happy with the first game. And what I want to do now is run through some tactical things that I saw. Some tactical things that we've discussed in detail, but we saw it in action straight away. And that's the best compliment I can give to Eric Ten Hag's system. Is you know what it's going to be, but we did it. And the players did it very well. Even after a couple of weeks of training, they're buying into it straight away. And that was a very important lesson to learn from yesterday. Because if it was a 4-0 win to Liverpool, you can guarantee... The reaction would be cataclysmic. Ah, oh, Ten Hag's a failure. But as soon as we win 4 0, calm down, lads. It's only pre season. Absolutely hypocrites the media would be if we lost that game 4 0. By the way, shout out to Tactical LCFC on Twitter for making a couple of these graphics, which I'm going to use now. But that was a strong team that we put out to start the game, wasn't it? It was a 4 2 3 1 we expected. A front four, an exciting front four. Sancho on the left, Martial through the middle, Rash sorry, Rash on the left, Martial up front, Sancho on the right. With Bruno just behind him in the number 10. And it was kind of what we expected, to, expected really. I'm not sure whether we expected McTominay and Fred in midfield. But let me run through some key patterns and some key things that we learned from that game. And first and foremost, it's Manchester United's pos possession? Formation in possession. We take a look here, and this is typical of a Ten Hag system. You'll remember that the first thing I said I was looking for in this game was to make sure that Manchester United our defensive line was higher, that we weren't camped on the edge of our own box, that we were, I don't know, maybe push further up there because if you push your centre-backs up there, everybody else follows. Lo and behold, look at the shape that we had here. We've got our two centre-backs there in Varane and Lindelof. And look how high the full-backs are. Shaw up there and Delo down here. You've got your two centre midfielders sort of holding the space there. But yeah, as it's put down there, it's almost like a 2-2-6 formation. Look how wide they are. The wingers tucking in. That's Ten Hag football. That's exactly what he wants to bring to Manchester United. And I tell you what, everybody performed yesterday. Actually, that's a lie. Not everybody performed. I thought Matomane was poor. I thought Tellez was poor. I thought Ahmad was uh, not that great. I thought um, Rashford was pretty poor. I thought Donny van der Beek. But his first game of preseason. I'm not going to overhype someone because of one performance. I'm not going to overly criticise somebody because of one less good performance. But overall... I was pretty damn happy. We saw some excitement from Jaden Sancho, a cracking goal. Every, everybody seemed to know what they were doing. And that's crucial. That's, that's what you need at stage one. Because remember, this is step one of the ladder. But everybody seemed to know the position, know where they needed to run, know when they needed to run back. Everybody was tactically smart. But at the same time as well, you can see here, Rashford sometimes really hugged the wing with Shaw tucking in. If you look at how we're building here, We've also got a bit of versatility because sometimes it switches. The winger holds the width, stretches the defence out. That's what Ten Hag likes to do. He likes to create overloads by creating a space there where, where a player's not being marked. Shaw sometimes cutting in there to create that space that Rashford can then use. Ball in behind. Yes, please. That's exactly what Ten Hag would want to do there. And I just, I'm so surprised really that it worked that well straight away. 
And I'll tell you what worked really well straight away was how well this front four pressed. Because pressing is not just about running around like a headless chicken. It's about working smart and not working, not necessarily not working hard, but working smart. And I'll tell you, the player that really shone yesterday for me was Anthony Martial. I have to give him credit for that. He, on that, on that wing down there, sorry, not on that, not on the wing down there. When, when, when the players were sort of tucking, let me go full screen here. When the players were tucking back a little bit out of possession uh, and the ball comes over the top here and Anthony Martial was operating as that number nine, he was closing down the fullbacks over here. And this is how he got his goal. He won the ball back there, ran straight through, boom, chipped the keeper. Wonderful finish. But Martial did that like three, four times, really. The press worked really well. Collective pressing as a team unit. I was very, very impressed by that. And if the beginnings of the system are there with that higher line, then the overloads it helped create up here with the press, it definitely worked. And that, for me, is a very, very good early sign for Manchester United. Now, this is a crucial thing that we have to see develop moving forward. Because falling into that, go, uh, basing it off the back of, is it this one? The 2 2 6 formation, you can see Fred and McTominay, they're both pretty static and narrow. Ideally, we want somebody there to pick up the ball. Somebody there to pick up the ball from defence and bring it forward. And if you can look here, it's that position where McTominay is. But if we could be completely honest, McTominay didn't thrive in that position yesterday. And that there exactly is what Ten Hag wants. He's got his fullbacks nice and wide. He's got his two centre-backs, a nice high line. Look at that. He's got his one midfielder there to receive the ball and one other midfielder in front of him to receive it this is exactly why Frankie de Jong is an irreplaceable signing for Eric Ten Hag this year there are other people that could do that that could receive that ball in that position there that could operate in that McTominay role and receive the ball from the, f the defenders first but nobody will be able to do that like de Jong can do that subconsciously naturally in an Eric Ten Hag system Eric Ten Hag would have to teach that to that player and that would take time. That's why he's going after De Jong so, so hard. And we will continue to do so. And I've said it so many times again. People are getting frustrated. I'm like, Richard Arnold, our CEO, is not flying to Barcelona two times in two weeks off the back of a hunch. He's going off assurances that Eric Ten Hag has given him that Frankie De Jong will want to join Manchester United. And where do you think Eric Ten Hag is getting those assurances from? Bingo. Directly from Frankie De Jong. Try not to get too hyped up into everything that's going on. But I'll tell you one thing I was mega, mega impressed with yesterday. That was our starting 11. We changed the second half. A full different team came out, basically. And how impressive were they? I was so impressed with Zidane Iqbal, with Charlie Savage. I thought Tyrone Malasia showed himself well. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, a little bit, uh, you know, to, <laughs> to be desired there in that position. And he still needs to grow. Uh, front three, Ama, Delanga, and Pellistri. Obviously, we didn't finish 3 0. We finished 4 0. They, they, they still did it. They, they still had a return against a much stronger Liverpool team in that second half. But the fact that we were able to change our whole outfield team and still keep the same system, still keep the same levels, the same intensity, the same shape, that is good coaching. That's what you want. That was a big sign that I saw yesterday that this system is really... And I tell you what, that the players are buying into it. Not, you're not going to get a better example than that. Changing the entire outfield team and still you can see the foundations are there. You could never do that with a previous United team. You couldn't. We lost our identity really when one or two players went off the pitch, let alone 10. Somebody else who really impressed me yesterday as well, I've got to be honest, David De Gea. I saw him coming out of his box like three times. I saw him... Sometimes dummying a player and then passing it wide to Delo or Shaw. Not just looking long every single kick. That bodes well for David De Gea. And I think, look, I love Dave. I hope that he can refine because I always say that. I remember what Dave was like in the first couple of years. The distribution was the best part of his game. And the rest sort of grew into it. It's almost like it was coached out of him to be that sort of goalkeeper. But look, early good signs there. And I'll be honest, it's just early good signs everywhere from that performance yesterday. Ten Hag, he's not getting carried away. Look, he's focusing on he's not focusing on the mistakes, but he knows full well that there were mistakes there. And I tell you what a big mistake was. 
that happened quite a few times is we got excited here we were playing well but when we started pressing up here and we got hit on the counter attack there was a huge gap there a big big gap that liverpool sort of they ran over there they ran over there and they started putting the ball into that gap and it caused us so many problems that's down to mctominay that's down to fred and that's down to manchester united Closing those gaps up. And let's be honest, that's why I want us to sign a sort of an enforcer type midfielder. But I don't think we will. But overall, I think we really saw the foundations of that Ten Hag system coming in. To If I run through it there, as I said, from that build-up play with the 2-6 two, two formation, two centre-backs, the full-backs really holding the width, stretching the defence, the wingers tucking in sometimes, but also at the same time, them going a bit alternative. Sometimes the winger held, held the width and the full-back tucked in. Everybody seems to know what they were doing. The second half team, they seem to know what they were doing. All singing off the same hymn sheet. I like that. The early signs are good. And I like what I've seen. I'm looking forward to the Melbourne game. Let's see what else we build on. But you can let me know what positives you took from that game yesterday. Uh, and what you saw. Maybe you saw something different to me. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. And I'll see you soon. Oh, I shook my head.